If we get to a point where the doctor assesses that you're going to need to be intubated, what is your feeling about that? Uh, I don't know nothing about it. I mean, it's not like a ventilator, then, right? It is a ventilator. Oh, it is a ventilator. It's, yeah. it's, yeah. it's also known as life support. Oh, yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't want to do that for you. Right. When the patient shares that they are glad to be in the hospital because they don't want to be at home and getting their family sick, I'm standing in the room and the thought crosses my mind. Well, I'm here in the room with you now, and I'm gonna go home. I don't wanna get my family sick. And so it creates this dynamic of, how can I continue to show up each and every day and be there for you, for what you're going through, when I am going through this in a very similar way? I'm one of your doctors, I'm Dr. Kalani. Can I come in? When I'm not at work, I feel anxious. It is very depressing to see patients pass away, and it's traumatic to hear families on the other end um, tearful and crying and, and, and the emotions and sometimes anger. It's a lot to take home. That, that bell that rings for the code blue is sometimes hard to get out of your head at night. Mm -hmm. When I lay my head down on the mm -hmm. pillow at night, I see the faces of the families on the iPad. I see the staff um, tears in their eyes. And sometimes I hear that bell ringing and it's hard to shake sometimes. Um, we worked so many hours, so many extra hours um, and seen more death than anyone should ever have to see. Whole families dying. You know, we'd have, we'd be coding a patient there and the family's on FaceTime watching this, they can't be there with their family member, crying. So it's been, it's taken an emotional toll on everyone. It's gut-wrenching. And I go home and I just, I cry in the shower, I cry in the car, I, you know, I talk to my husband about it and just get it out, I don't know. We're all dealing with the same thing, so. And we talk to each other. It's important for um, us to continue to talk about the traumas that we're experiencing on a daily basis um, because we can't wait until this thing is over to process everything we've been through. Day in and day out, when I'm with a patient who's actively dying, when I'm at a code, when I am uh, supporting somebody who is expressing an immense amount of suffering, and there have been so many of these cases where there's so much suffering, I have to remind myself that this is not my suffering, this is theirs. But with COVID, when I show up to the room, the fear that they're expressing of having gotten sick and now the fear of getting worse, the fear of dying, is the same fear that I'm watching on TV, on the news when I get home. The same fear that my wife is expressing when we talk about this. The same concern that I'm hearing from my kids who are now doing online schooling. And so the margin of what is theirs and what is mine has been in many ways eliminated. And we have this collective experience of facing and dealing with this pandemic. All right, what you gonna make? We couldn't get any um, idea as to what his oxygen level was, so we thought we'd try to get a blood gas, which is um, an arterial blood stick. And he's so swollen where we, we couldn't even feel a pulse. It's not good when you can't capture their blood gases. That means that things are really progressing. So um, dad's much more swollen. Um, his skin is really just falling apart. Um, We've, we've really beaten up his body pretty bad in trying to keep him alive. Oh, honey. Bye. I'm so sorry, sweetheart. We um, share with them the risks and benefits of, of providing the option of resuscitation but that simply at the time 
that a patient is so far along in the disease process that we're at the point that we're worried about their heart stopping, that resuscitation would not only be not beneficial, but it could also cause unnecessary suffering on a physical and spiritual level. And that's when I, I pull my best chaplain in <laughs> and they help me along on that, on that spiritual end. Spiritual care, Chaplain Kevin. Her son, we're intubating her. Yeah, I'll call him now. Yeah. Um, the nurse just asked me to give you a call and let you know that we're, we're probably going to get to a point where we're going to have to intubate her. Oh, oh she is? I know. I'm going to set up the iPad for you to see, Mom. Like I said, she is pretty sleepy. Um, but, you know, we'll talk with her for a little while and let you guys see one another, okay? So, really, the evolution of this technology is. Um, trying to re-envision what we were able to do in including families in the care that we're offering in the hospital and invite them into that care again through this um, new medium. And it's not the same as it would be if they were here in person, but it's enough for them to be able to see the patient um, and understand better when we say they're suffering. Um, it sometimes is the thing that's needed for them to be able to have that closure to say goodbye. It's important for the families to see the treatment that their, their loved one is receiving. And at the same time, it's important for our patients to see their loved ones on the other end, smiling at them, singing, some of them playing instruments, that reassurance that they have, that they have loved ones really caring for them. We're gonna say some prayers, okay, Mama? My words perhaps are not what's remembered. It's the presence I was able to offer them that makes the difference, that um, offers the support, that is the encouragement, is the, um, the reminder that they're not alone. And that, I think, is what keeps me coming back to work every day. My sense that God is calling me to this place, to these people at this time, would you bless this entire family, give them good rest, give them good strength, keep them protected from continued illness in their family. Keep them safe, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. One, two, three. One, two, three. Once a patient is, is needing to be hospitalized for COVID, they're pretty darn sick and they are at very high risk for mortality. And families can't grapple with that concept. It's really hard to understand that this simple infection can take somebody down in such a short period of time and cause this much damage. It's unbelievable, I, I agree, I get it. At the same time, we're also very limited in our treatment options and our families just simply don't understand that. So it's extremely frustrating from our end and it's extremely frustrating on the family's end. So then they feel that, you know, the hospital's to blame or that nobody just wants to just blame the disease. It's, it's the infection that should be blamed. For like an hour, so we're thinking it was probably this low because it was like that for a long time. We try to celebrate each day to make it meaningful because every day is meaningful for us and when a patient's family is experiencing pain, we try to be present for them. Um, but we have to take care of ourselves as well. What about for lunch? Are you sure? I might get you something anyway. <laughs> so it's my job to offer that care in the midst of the care for the patient families, good care to the staff, and make sure that they're well supported so that they can then um, support the patient's families really well too. It's very, very exhausting. A lot of our staff are working five, six, 12 hour shifts a week. And a lot of them with unable to see their families as well because they don't go home after this. They go home to either a hotel reservation, uh, to a motel stay in there, and then just communicate virtually with, with their families. That's good. There's like three people at home. I know, like recently too. Okay.
I know, in a row, yeah. right? There's a special chime for our COVID population when they get released home as well. Yeah. It means that a, a COVID patient got discharged home. They play that every time. <laughs> that's, that's one of those things that it does give everybody kind of the chills where it's like, okay, thank gosh. One of them went home today. One of them went home at least. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, check out these other videos from USA Today to stay up to date with all the latest news.